so we have started with the wastewater engineering and we have seen in the previous lecture that in water supply engineering we have studied that initially the water is taken from the source then the water is treated that is called as water treatment and after treatment of water the water is distributed to the community so after the it is after the water is distributed to the community then certain percentage of water comes out as a waste water so in the percentage wise i have given it 70 to 80 percent of the water that is supplied to the community comes as a waste water now this waste water is further collected and conveyed to the waste water treatment plant so similar to the water treatment plant there is a waste water treatment plant and this collection and conveyance system this is called as a sewerage system now this wastewater treatment plant after the wastewater treatment plant the water is then taken to the disposal and it is disposed in one of the sources again so we have seen few definitions of sewage sewers sewage dry weather flow and wet weather flow so once again revising the dry weather flow so it is the domestic and industrial waste together from the community so we have seen 70 to 80 percent of the water that is supplied gets converted into dry weather flow so to understand this simply you can just take the example of your house let's say if total 100 liters of water comes into your house then 70 to 80 liters that is 70 to 80 percentage of that 100 liters gets converted into waste water now that waste water can be the water which is generated by flushing in the toilets by bathing in the bathrooms or maybe washing the utensils so this all comes under the dry weather flow now there is one another discharge that is called as wet weather flow now what is the meaning of wet weather flow nearby your house let's say there is a particular amount of rainfall is taking place now the rainwater which is getting collected that rainwater comes under the storm weather flow or we, can, we call it as wet weather flow so this both the dry weather flow and wet weather flow this has to be conveyed by certain sewers and that sewer system is called as sewerage system so there are three types of systems we have seen one is combined one is separate and another is partially combined and partially separate now so we are going to see in this lecture how to estimate that dry weather flow and wet weather flow so estimation estimation of dry weather flow and wet weather flow so we have to estimate this two parameters so first one we will see dry weather flow so i have already given a basic idea about this dry weather flow so dry weather flow it depends on the it depends on the per capita water supply dry weather flow depends on per capita water supply so around 70 to 80 percentage of water supply gets converted gets converted into wastewater okay so to calculate the dry weather flow it is nothing but a discharge only so q dry weather flow q dry weather flow this is equal to the amount of population or number of population number of persons into per capita sewage flow per capita sewage flow so this is the formula for calculating the dry weather flow now how to calculate the per capita sewage flow so this per capita per capita sewage flow is equal to per capita water supply per capita water supply into factor okay so there is one factor now so this factor is given in terms of percentage here so if we write it we can write it as factor 
is equal to fraction of water supply fraction of water supply fraction of water supply which is getting converted into sewage which is getting converted into sewage and what are the values of the factor so the values of factors are 0.7 to 0.8 so in the question it will be given to you by using this factor you can calculate the dry weather flow see while calculating the discharge while designing the water treatment plant we have taken population multiplied by per capita water demand okay or per capita water supply so if you remember the value was 135 lpcd for low income group so this 135 lpcd is the amount of water which is distributed to a community okay now out of this 135 lpcd 0.7 2.8 times that is 70 to 80 percentage of this lpcd it gets converted into wastewater and this value is called as per capita sewage flow so if we multiply the population by per capita sewage flow we will get the dry weather flow okay so this is the calculation of dry weather flow now the second one is second one is wet weather flow wet weather flow so write down so wet weather flow is a storm water wet weather flow is a storm water from urban areas from urban areas okay it is estimated by using it is estimated by using the rational formula by using the rational formula now what is this formula so q wet weather flow this is equal to air divided by 360 so this is the main formula now here units are important okay where this a is the area of catchment area of catchment and it should be substituted in hectares now second one is i so i is called as impermeability factor impermeability factor r is called as or r is the rainfall intensity rainfall intensity and it is substituted in mm per hour it is substituted in mm per mm per hour and q is called as q is called as wet weather flow in meter cube per second so these are the values that we have to substitute in this formula to get the wet weather flow now we'll go in detail about this rainfall intensity so this r value so this r value is calculated as 25.4 a divided by tc plus b 25.4 a by tc plus b where r you know r is the rainfall intensity in mm per hour a and b are constants a and b are constant and tc is called as time of concentration tc is called as time of concentration now how to calculate this a and b so in the problem this a and b's will be given or maybe directly the value of r may be given but let's say if the value is not given then it depends upon the time of concentration so if the time of concentration is between 5 to 20 minutes 
and second case is if it is greater than 20 minutes then the value of a and b is see how to learn this table this 5 to 20 minutes and greater than 20 minutes so this b value will be 10 20 30 and 40 so these are the values for a and b so let's say the time of concentration is 18 minutes we'll see what is time of concentration but if the time of concentration is 18 minutes then you will take the value of a as 30 and b as 20 okay now so we'll see what is the definition of time of concentration now so time of concentration So TC value. So this time of concentration, it is the time after which the catchment starts contributing to the runoff. So for this now, if you have done the hydrology subject videos, if you have completed, then you will understand what is the meaning of catchment. But right now I am just writing it here. I am drawing it here. So catchment is a particular area which is contributing to the rainfall. Okay. So this is a catchment area and whatever the small rivers are there let's say this is the main river which is present in the particular catchment area and this river is flowing like this now how this river will get generated in this catchment small streams will contribute to this river and this will get and this whole water will get collected and it will get transferred to the next area so this yellow area which you are seeing this is called as catchment area catchment area and this point is called as catchment outlet now from this point there is one point where we measure the discharge so this point is called as a point where we measure discharge okay so q is measured here at this point now let's say the rain water or one drop of water is dropped at this point okay that is the farthest point so the time taken by this drop of water to reach this catchment outlet so the time taken by the drop of water to reach to the catchment outlet this time is called as time of entry so that is called as te time of entry okay and the same drop of water when it is traveling from the catchment outlet to the point where the discharge is measured so that time is called as time of flow that is tf see whatever the q we are measuring that q we are measuring here at this point Now what is the time of concentration definition? So it is the time after which it is the time after which after which the entire catchment the entire catchment starts contributing to the runoff starts contributing to the runoff okay when all the when will all the or entire catchment start contributing to the runoff when the farthest point or the we can say the drop of water which is at the farthest point it will contribute to the runoff that time will be called as the time of concentration okay because you just imagine some drops of rain water they will be falling here some some will be falling here but the point which is at the farthest okay that will take the maximum time so that time is called as the time of concentration the time after which the entire catchment catchment starts contributing to the runoff is called as time of concentration and this time of concentration tc this is equal to tc is equal to time of entry plus time of flow so if we add this two we will get the value of time of concentration okay so this much information is enough for the 
estimation of the wet weather flow so with this now we are able to calculate the dry weather flow and wet weather flow for the design of combined sievers for the design of combined sievers we have to add the both dry weather flow and wet weather flow so for the design for design of combined sievers combined sievers what is the meaning of combined sievers there is only one sever on that one sever only both the dry weather flow and wet weather flow is taken so for the design of combined sever that is q combined will be equal to q dry weather flow plus q wet weather flow 